Jesus, you'll fall in love with his word. If you fall in love with his word, you will love this church. Because his word is going to get preached. But if you're basing it on personalities and you mad because your daddy did you like that and now the pastor do that, whatever that is, you're not going to be happy. Because I can't give you that kind of attention. Amen? All right. Okay, well, we got that straight. Don't be, look at somebody and say, don't be weary. Don't be weary. Bible talks about weariness because God knows we will get weary. But look at somebody and say, don't be weary. When we have to wait on something past the time we had allotted for it, we begin to do what? Grow weary in waiting. When we have to wait on something past the time we had allotted for it. Galatians 6 and 9 says, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap. This is suggesting, suggesting that the waiting period is a season. It's a season. And at the end of that season, you're going to reap or receive. You're going to get what it is if you faint not. Weariness comes to make you faint. Quit. Stop waiting. That's what it comes for. Some things in the kingdom of God are very difficult to understand. I think one of the things is healing and, you know, healing and miracles of healing and those kind of things are complex because we read in the Bible how Elijah, Elisha, I mean, he had so much healing power in him that they threw a dead man on his bones and the dude came alive. But that same Elijah died sick. Yeah, the Bible said he, had, he was sick. Ain't that a head scratcher? <laughs> Couldn't he just touch his own bone? <laughs> yeah, it's complex. You know why it's complex? Because it's just beyond our understanding. So we don't get weary and waiting on healing. We just believe God. Yeah. Amen. Does it always come? No. Now, you don't think Elisha was trying to use that uh, mantle he got from Elijah and he probably wrapped up in it every night for healing. Ooh, it's quiet in here. Some things just aren't going to make easy sense for us. That's why the 32nd messages will get you in trouble. Because you will watch one where somebody is telling you it's your faith. You don't have enough faith. Well, did Jacob have enough faith? Did he have enough? Jacob, Jacob, God changed his name to Israel because of his faith level. He believed in the God of his father and his father's father. And he started the nation and had the 12 tribes. But he limped. His hip didn't work anymore until he died. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. I know that, you know, this ain't even, I'm just preaching. But yeah, so you got to understand that you don't grow weary in it, but you got to put your faith in God in it. Amen. 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 And sometimes it doesn't come. I got a problem with these folks that come on these 30 second things and tell you that it's your guarantee and it has to come. And then I pick up the Bible and I see it didn't come for everybody. Yeah. Old and New Testament. Did none of the disciples die in old age? They are all murdered young. Yeah. One instance, Paul bends down and the Pharisees, they get stones and they stone him 
until he's not moving anymore and they believe he's dead. But it's not time for him to die. So the Bible said the disciples gathered around him. He got up and they went on to the next city. But then he got to Nero's chopping block, looked out the window of the hotel. I mean, of the, not the hotel. He wasn't in no hotel. Orosho Toto. That's all. I rebuke that. Ah. He's in the opposite. <laughs> He's in jail. Looked outside, saw the chopping block. Wasn't no rebuke in the chopping block. But see, our problem is we don't want God to be God. We want God to be people. And so we want to listen to people and believe everything that people say without tr checking it with what the Bible says. I'm not here. I'm not here to crush your faith. I'm telling you, keep your faith, but let God be God. Amen. Because I got a Bible where he was God. And I have examples for everything. Can I keep preaching in the house? Galatians 6 and 9, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we don't faint. This is a human response to long, overextended waiting. When you wait a long time, the human response is weariness. That is why the Bible addresses weariness and emotional fatigue when we have to wait. We don't like to wait for anything in 2024. We don't have to wait for a pop tart. It takes two seconds to cook that in the microwave. Popcorn, remember popcorn was a whole task when we was growing up. Get a skillet. Gotta have a lid. Heat the oil up. Put the kernels in there. Shake and tear the, tear the oven up. I mean, you tearing the stove top up. Just, just. Then Jiffy Pop decided, you know, you shouldn't have to use grandma's cast iron skillet. You have to have forearms like Popeye. <laughs> so they created a little mini, kind of looked like a skillet, but it's just a enough aluminum foil to make your immune system disappear. Nothing but aluminum. The handle, everything. I mean, you are contaminated when you finish the Jiffy Pop. Yeah, but people want stuff quick. So they just throw the bag in the microwave, pop it up, get it, eat it. Eat that and carcinogens. Whole bunch of cancer causing carcinogens because of the way it heats the insides of food, pushes all the nutrients out. That's what a microwave does, if you didn't know. Yeah, it heats up the liquid in the food and then pushes the nutrients out. So basically, you might as well eat the bag. <laughs> amen. I'm not going to preach pharmacos in here, but amen. Take your time and cook it right. <laughs> cook it right. Cook it. Take your time. Can't eat out all the time. You got to take your time, man, and cook it for health reasons. Amen. Hey, man, anytime it's quick, something's wrong. I'm watching, reading the Old Testament, listening to, I mean, uh, watching some of the stories, reading some of the stories. That's what I meant to say. Reading some of the stories and different things. And, you know, it'd be so funny, like a guest will show up that they wasn't expecting but it don't change the way they gonna prepare the food. Like, oh, you showed up? Okay, so give us about eight hours. Cause we gotta go get the ox, kill him, skin him, gut him, de-blood him. <laughs> then we gotta build the thing for the heat. Get some stones, but I mean, and you would have to wait. So he said he showed up and they prepared this meal. If you just read it like that, you're thinking, 
Oh yeah, they just threw some stuff in the microwave and just had it. No, no. When they prepared a meal, they prepared a meal. But they took their time. And they lived longer than us. Amen. Yes, they did. So take your time with the food. Take your time. Boy, I'm teaching on a whole lot of stuff that I hadn't even planned on it. But we need that. Amen. Don't get in a rush like the rest of this world. The Bible, when you're in a rush, you'll expect things fast. And then when you get before the Lord, you won't give God the time he needs. Because you're used to everything else happening quickly. I order stuff from Amazon and if I order it right now, when I get home, it's there. That's too quick. It shouldn't be that quick. Eddie, them, they be laughing at me. Oh, get past the order because he, he knows them. I, I, I don't know why I can get stuff so quick. But yeah, it just it shouldn't be that fast. You should be able to flip through channels that quick. Thousand channels. Why you need a thousand channels? Well, I downsized my my bill for Direct TV, so I only have two hundred channels now. And so, two hundred channels. That's too many options. You know how much time it's going to take you sitting in front of that? But the Bible addresses weariness and emotional fatigue because God is a timeless being. Look at somebody and say timeless. timeless. Destination entropy. Just get it if you haven't watched that. I explain God's time and how he views time. But God is a timeless being and we are all tethered to time. So he's timeless. We're all in time. And because of that, we expect him to move according to us. This causes us to feel disappointed and what? Grow weary when his delay counters our expectancy. Hosea 12 and 6. Therefore, turn thou to God, keep mercy and judgment, and finally do what? Wait on God how? Continually. That means until he does it. Don't stop waiting. Here's a perfect example. The Bible tells us that this is when Saul was anointed king. Somebody arguing with me about political stuff because I told him, I said, nowhere in the Bible did the people pick the leader. God don't let people pick a leader with our short-sightedness. We don't know what to pick. Well, well, the people pick Saul. And what Bible is that? I remember God telling Samuel by himself to go and anoint the Benjamite. He's tall, than, he's a foot taller than everyone. He'll be able to see everything. God gave him a chance. God picked Saul. The people wanted a king, but God picked Saul. Look at somebody and say, God picked Saul. Yeah, God ain't going to let his people pick their leader. Yeah, that's why America is in trouble now. Not, that y'all, not because y'all picking leaders, but because you think you can pick one. That's the trouble. <laughs> the trouble is you don't know you're watching a sideshow. You're watching Comic View. Two people that aren't even against each other being against each other for your sake. That's what you're watching. None of it's real. None of it. None of it. You mad and upset. You get mad at me now for saying it. Yeah, Yeah, but my ancestors, they fought for the right. (laughs) Name them. What was their names? (laughs) Name your ancestor. Boy, black folk and these ancestors. Boy, you better leave them folks alone. They stayed in trouble. (sighs) 
But anyway, so man, there's just so many side messages in this message. I thought this was going to be real quick. All right, here we go. So Saul was the king, and people didn't really have confidence in him at this point because the Philistine, Philistines was, you know, had him surrounded, so they all start hiding and scattering and. You know, and then Samuel had told Saul, you know, I, I'm coming to offer the burnt offering. You know, I'm the priest. I'm going to come do it. So just wait until I get there. And so, you know, Saul started looking around. Man, these folk going to think I am whackety whack whack as a king if I don't make something happen. So the Bible said seven days he waited according to the set time. That's how long Samuel told him to wait. But Samuel did not come, and the people were scattered from him. So Saul said, I'm going to have to do this myself. <laughs> Bring hither a burnt offering to me and peace offerings. And he offered the burnt offering. And it came to pass, this is how it always happens. As soon as the end of the offering, Samuel showed up. <laughs> And Saul went out to meet him that he might salute him. Saul, you know, he was a few french fries short of a happy meal. Bro, you just disobeyed the commandment of the Lord and you running willy-nilly happy to go greet Samuel? I'd have been somewhere hiding. Because, you know, we picture Samuel as, you know, this little priest. Oh, no. Samuel was a butcher. The Bible said he hewed Agag into pieces. Pieces. Agag couldn't put up a fight or nothing. See, that dude, I'm not just going to run up, oh, hey. <laughs> no. <laughs> but he ran up to salute him. And Samuel said, what did you do? Now, this is, this is another fry gone out of the Happy Meal right here. Saul said, because I saw the people were scattered from me and that thou comest not within the days appointed and the Philistines gathered themselves together at Michmash, therefore said I, the Philistines will come down upon me and I haven't made supplication to the Lord. So here's what I did, Samuel. I forced myself. <laughs> Something's wrong with him. I forced myself to do it. <laughs> How do you tell somebody you forced yourself? <laughs> I forced myself and I offered it. Meaning, I man, I didn't want to do it. I really, really did want to do it. So I had to force myself <laughs> to disobey God. I didn't want to disobey God. But the situation... <laughs> required me to just I just had to force myself because myself didn't want to do it <laughs> me didn't want to do it so I had to force me <laughs> what is he talking about and Samuel said to Saul thou hast done foolishly thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God which he commanded thee. For now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. Man, you was about to be the dude. But now the kingdom can't continue. The Lord has sought him a man after his own heart now. He's looking for somebody that's going to do it the way he says it. In another passage, he said, he's, he, he, he's, matter of fact, he's getting a friend of yours that's better than you. That's what drove Saul crazy. Because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commandeth. So he got weary in waiting. When we grow weary while waiting, we can set ourselves up for what? Did Saul make a bad decision? Bad decisions and choices, but they're not just any old choices. They're choices that can cost us the fulfillment of what we were waiting for. So whatever you were waiting for, if you make a bad decision and in waiting, then you can mess up what you're waiting for. Amen. Amen. Didn't Abraham do that? Made a bad decision in waiting. And messed the whole world up. 
You, you got special seed, bro. You got generational seed. You can't be willy-nilly with that. You birthed in a godly lineage. You didn't birth a whole nother lineage to fight the godly lineage. Because you couldn't wait. Listening to your woman. And boy, she did him real wrong. Amen. Now all women ain't like, I'm not putting y'all down. Y'all, y'all help meets. But she didn't help him this time. She gave him the girl and was like, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. You, you sure you good? I'm good. I'm good. I'm not worried about her. I'm already beautiful. I'm already beautiful. I'm, you've already said that. Because when we was back there in Egypt, you, 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 you lied, said I was your sister because I was so beautiful. You just, I, you, I'm beautiful. I know, I'm good. I'm confident in myself. <laughs> Soon as the baby came, you're going to have to get her out of here. <laughs> what? You, 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 she got to go? She got to go because she, she did something I can't do. See, the beauty and all that, we probably equal. But she didn't did something I can't do. So you, she, she got to go. Abraham like, golly, man. Like, what do you want me to do? You should have listened to God, Abraham. <laughs> While King Saul waited on Samuel, he grew weary as he watched his men in distress over the great presence of the Philistines. Although he did wait for a while, he grew weary after the appointed time passed. He then disobeyed the commandment of the Lord and ultimately forfeited his ability to continue as the king. All because he acted on his weariness. Look at somebody and say, don't be weary. Don't be weary. And please, when you get weary, don't act on weariness. 2 Thessalonians 3 and 13. But ye, brethren, be not weary in well-doing. I love the way this says this because as long as you're doing well, you know that there's, you don't have to be weary. Amen. Now, if you're not doing well, while waiting, we must always have faith that what we are waiting on will occur in God's time and not our own time. Amen. Amen. Psalms 27 and 14, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall what? Strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. So the weariness, God will counteract that with strength and give you strength if you be of good courage. Good courage means that you believe that he's going to show up. Amen. We don't give up hope on what God can do. Has God shown up for anybody in here before? Yeah. Now, let me go back to an old song. May not come when you want him, but he's right on time. Was he not on time for somebody in here? Amen. God didn't write that song. He didn't write that song. He's probably saying, y'all quit singing that. I didn't say that. He comes when he want to. May not come when you want him, but he come right on time. Maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> well, that just mess with somebody. Wait a minute. Now, I sung it a whole lot growing up. And I, you better quit believing songs. They write some foolishness in songs. I remember one song this dude wrote what he was trying to sing, If God is Dead. Y'all remember that old song? If God is dead, what makes the flowers blue? And then he said, but if God is dead, what makes winter come in June? He said that on a record. We had that record growing up. Remember that mother? And I, I might have been, I might have been six, seven years old. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> Daddy. I thought that was because we knew the dude. But he, he said that on a song. 
what makes winter come into I don't know what makes winter come into now I know God is not dead but I don't know what makes winter come in June amen especially in Texas <laughs> we cannot just wait but we must be prepared to wait this is what I want to help you with this is what a lot of folks don't want to talk about this is not diminishing your faith you know you know, in the name it, claim it era, we be scared of things we say. Now, to understand, I've preached the message that your words have power. But also, there is a Holy Spirit that protects you even in times of doubt. Man came to Jesus about his, about his son and was like, man, he cast himself in the fire. He's just wild and I don't know what to do. He said, well, do you believe? He said, yes, I believe but help my unbelief. Right. Now, what is that? He just said that. Now, you know, in the modern uh, evangelical, charismatic, uh, fanatical understanding, it, saying that forfeit the whole thing. Help my unbelief. Oh, he didn't believe it. Can't happen. He's telling Jesus, help me. I'm having trouble believing. It did not change the miracle at all. That's in the Bible for a reason. It didn't change the miracle. It showed his humanness, but it didn't change the miracle. He wasn't a scoffer. Now, in another instant, they're in the house, and the little girl is not dead, and they want, you know, to uh, uh, bring the girl to life. And Jesus came, and he put everybody out because they were scoffers. So those are negative opinions from a standpoint of you can't do it. But this man believed he can do it, he just didn't know if it would be done. Yeah. That's human. Yeah. I believe you can do it, but help me believe. You see what I'm saying? Totally different. And so you got to remember that. And so being prepared to wait is being prepared really for both outcomes. Amen. If God does it. Thank God he did it. If he didn't do it, he's still God. Thank God he's God because he's done other stuff. See, folk got a problem with this kind of man. It's too practical. Well, you better listen to the three Hebrew boys because that's exactly what they said. They said, throw us in the furnace. Our God can deliver us. But if he lets us burn up alive, guess what? You did us a favor. Because now we are in the hands of the Lord forever. Yeah, that's faith. That's real human faith. So you got to be prepared to wait. And we must not allow weariness to set in while we're waiting. Keeping what we are waiting for above our doubts, feelings, and impatience keeps us from growing weary. So don't grow weary, but you have to wait. And it might not happen. Psalms 37 and 34. See, we ain't going to be charismatically crazy in here. Amen. I've played for churches like that. I've been, at, I've been a part of ministries that way, and that's foolishness. Because as soon as the lame person come up that, that they can't heal, then oh, there's something wrong with them. And that's not always the case. We must not allow weariness to set in while we're waiting, keeping what we are waiting for above our doubts, feelings, and impatience keeps us from going away. Wait on the Lord, keep his way. He shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. I like this passage because it's basically saying that even though you're waiting, and even though you may be disappointed, if you just trust in God, he's going to do things. Other things. Maybe not that thing, but other things because he's God. If he is your God, is he, is he anybody's God in here? 
Amen. Folk don't want, you know, we're going to lose some members today because this message is just not powerful enough. When we are prepared to wait, we can what? I'm resting in the waiting. I'm resting in the waiting. There's things I had before God that I wanted him to do so bad, Devin, and he just didn't. But I was resting in the waiting because I trust him. He knows what's best. Just because you ask for it don't mean it's a good, it, it's a good thing to happen. Who are you? I thought, you, I thought the Bible said, see, when somebody start off like that, <laughs> it's already bad. I thought the Bible said he would do anything we ask him. Ask him, yeah, according to his will. That, you know what a will is? What's your will? Will is what you wanted to do. Ain't that a will? Your will is what you want to do. So it's what God wants to do. When he wants to do it, how he wants to do it. That's his will. So according to whether or not he wants to do it or not, that's how it should read. Look, that just messed some, somebody's head twisted off. It's in, the, it's in the aisle. Yeah. You ain't never seen him like that because he's a genie to you. You can't make God do nothing. Do you know who you're dealing with? Do you know who we're talking about, who we're worshiping and who we're praising? He's so beyond, you can't make him do what you want him to do. Because you said it. Oh, Pastor, I got to leave this church because I'm just used to when I speak it, it just pops up, it just happens. You do need a, your own church, man, if you're that powerful. I've had God tell me, no, stop asking for that. That's not going to happen. Hey, amen. Who we talking about? God? But see, God knows the future. So he knows why and whether or not. We don't know that. So we're basing it on our social media understanding of things. Our 30 second get a word for the week. Instantaneously. I'm going to go to Fort Worth. You jump in a car, you in Fort Worth. But Jesus, if he wanted to go to Fort Worth back in his day, I want to go to Fort Worth. All right, see y'all in three weeks. Because we're going to walk slow, heal some folk, have some services on the way. Then we'll finally get there. Amen, boy, I do. And I knew toes was going to curl at this message. I knew your toenail was going to scrape your shoe. Because <laughs> folk don't want to hear this kind of stuff, but this is practicality. This is practical word. So you won't walk around believing the wrong thing. I want something for the Lord, so I'm going to Google and watch everybody that's talking about it. You know how dangerous that is? We are, when we are prepared to wait, we can rest in waiting. The closer we get, we are to God, the more we learn that we cannot rush him. Amen. The more mature you get in the faith, the more you know that God ain't thinking about your time. Your, your clock, no. And you don't want him to. You don't want God, you don't want God in your time like that. Because then he'll wonder why he's not getting enough of it. Yeah, you trying to bring God in your time, God going to look at your time and say, I mean, I see a whole lot going on except me. 
That's all right, Lord. You know, like the children of Israel. That's all right, Lord. Moses, we'll listen to you. We'll listen to you. <laughs> he knows when whatever we are waiting for should come. Yeah, that, that's this life and that includes the next life. Some stuff ain't going to come to the next life. Amen. And I ain't Erica Badu. I don't believe in no next life and you still here. I'm talking about that after we leave this place and be with him. Amen. Amen. That's somebody's favorite song. See you next light, lifetime. Head full of demons. Isaiah 55 and 8. For my thoughts, I don't think like you. Neither are your ways. I don't act like you. So don't expect me to do what you say do. He's going to do what he wants to do. Now we put our petitions before him. We ask him. And as long as it's in his will, he'll grant it. He promised that. But when? That's his prerogative. Can I keep preaching? Yes. This message too hardcore. Amen. Amen. We, we needed some room anyway. Summary. I'm sure J. Brian, somebody is going to leave ABC because of this message. Because this is not TBN enough. TBN will make you think you deserve a jet. Preachers on that. I got the biggest house in the world. The biggest house. I'm, I have the biggest house in the world. Why are you on TV and saying that? I have a hundred horses. Why? They're trying to live like Solomon. God will show up when he needs to. Look at somebody and say, God will show up when he needs to. There is not a need that he will not supply. Amen. Need that he will not supply. Need, look at somebody and say need. Man, need is relative for us. It's absolute for God. God knows what you really need. What you say need It's relative There is not an instant Where he will not do what he deems Necessary at the time For us He is a good father But he doesn't move according to our time Amen. Anybody have a daddy like that? My daddy was like that. I just, I can't make my dad get in a hurry. My dad was slow moving. He was in chill mode all the time. Wasn't he mother? He's just a chill guy. So I couldn't rush him. I couldn't get him. Only time we saw him move fast is on the basketball court. Now he could hoop. Yeah, my daddy could hoop. But as far as just you going to make him do something quick, especially if it costs money? And it might not happen. But he's going to take his time and move according to his time. And then after I got older, I learned why my dad moved that way. My dad moved that way because he had three children. So he couldn't just do what each one of them requested. Because you got to keep the other two in mind when you're doing whatever you're doing. Because then if you do it for one, the other two will have an expectancy. So he was real careful at how he divvied up what he was going to do. That's just three kids. Some of y'all got a lot. You got to be careful. You got to be, you, you can't just do. Because the others are watching. So my dad would be slow to do it. And then when it came to money, he had a budget. My dad was a, you know, a, a lot of the time growing up, he was a full-time pastor. And he had a small church, so 
you know, when, 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 when everybody got the income tax, it was all gravy. But, you know, toward November, October, November, things slow down. So around that period, he's thinking, I got to save up. I got to make sure I don't overextend myself just because my kids are wanting it. Because a lot of times you can be super soft on your kids. I mean, your heart, my dad was, he just loved us, especially our grandchildren, man. He just, Vicky used to have my daddy waking up in the middle of the night to get her ice cream. Then he'd go to the store, come back. I don't want that. I want cookies and cream. And he'd go back out. Vicky. <laughs> Vicky is Roderick here. Vicky and Roderick. But he would go. He'd just get up and go. So he is soft hearted. So he had to protect his own heart so he didn't give out more than what he had. Y'all see what I'm saying? That's a good father thinking of all of those things. But we're from our perspective. Why won't he give it to me? I need it now. Well, just imagine God who knows all of us and how many hairs is on our heads. <laughs> Some of our heads is easy. <laughs> how many is supposed to be on your head? He knows that too. He knows that too. How many used to be? But he knows all of that. God knows all of that. And so he's taking everything. He's moving everything according to his plan. So when you come before him, you can't just say, Lord, I just, if, if you could just give me that woman right there as my wife. I need her. But she's dating somebody else. Well, get rid of him and then she'll be mine. But she don't like you. Oh, but reach down in a heart and turn it to the... God is like, man, I'm sick of you. Will you go get somebody else? That's just an example, but those are the kind of things we ask for. Lord, I need a financial. I need a break. I need a breakthrough, bust my head miracle <laughs> to pay this debt. Did the devil give you the debt? Because God is used to clean, you know, working behind the devil and fixing what the devil and the canker worm destroyed. I, you did the dead part. Oh, but I'm waiting. I'm still, he's going to come through with a job maybe? Come through? I, amen. Amen. He's a good, responsible father, so he's just not going to move according to our time. The times that we move, listen to this, our time. This is how we got our time. You want to know how you got the time you got? Your time usually is a re result of bad decisions and impatience. So when we need rescue, help, or intervention from God, we try to fit him in the disastrous timeline that we've created. So you got a jacked up timeline because you've been stupid. Now you want to fit God in it for God to rescue you out of it. And God is saying, no, I'm going to let you stew in it and I'm going to let you deal with it. Yeah, now, God is not going to leave you, but he wants you to learn a lesson here. God is not at fault and he will not be held accountable to us based on the need we have created. Amen. 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 Most of the time the weariness kicks in because... What we did prior and the decisions we made before our petition to God. We want God in rescue mode. But he remains in father mode and allows us to wait to teach us what? And better decision making in the future. Somebody don't like that. That's, that's, that's just ministering too much. No matter what. It is you're waiting on. Remember, do not grow weary. Amen. Keep believing that God is going to do it, but be prepared for God to do it when he decides to. Yeah. Now, here's the question. Why the rush? Yeah. Think about that. Why the rush? Is it a life or death situation? Is 
there a such thing as a life or death situation when it comes to God? Isn't he the creator of everything, including life and death? So, if all power is in him, then the best timing is in him. <laughs> and when he deems the time is right, he will show up. Maybe you have to go through something longer than you had expected, or God's answer is not the answer you expected. Whatever the case, you must wait either for what you need or understanding of why it did not come. In any case, look at somebody say, in any case. God is God, and the more we trust in him and his timing, the less weary we become. Amen. Finally, Isaiah 40 and 31 says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall what? Renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and what? Not be weary. They shall walk and what? They that wait upon the Lord. It didn't say, they that wait upon the Lord shall get it. It didn't say that. <laughs> it basically phrased this as waiting being the principle. Not what you're waiting for, but learning to wait. Everyone stand to your feet. I know I preached. I'm encouraging myself. Your dirty looks don't bother me. I don't care. Your rent is going to get paid. <laughs> Pastor, this message, usually your messages is on time, but this one wasn't on time. Because <laughs> I got rent due. Man. Rent don't have, rent, I don't want to say rent don't have nothing to do with God, but rent has very little to do with God where you decided to live. A, look at somebody don't want to clap at that. I, I, I can't clap. We just bought a house and we're struggling. Man, you know, before I bought the house we're living in, I think I had four or five notebook pages full of expenditures and equations. It looked like Einstein's notebook, making sure I could do what I needed to do years in advance just making sure making sure sure I mean and then after I made sure I went to sleep woke up and had to make sure again I'm not moving because somebody said to I'm not moving because it looked like I should move God woke me up in the middle of the night and said move out of that house you in I said but Lord <laughs> good it's basically free we just we can stay this way <laughs> yeah but stuff we want and need and then we get ourselves in a situation and then finances come and stuff and then now we questioning God and you know we don't you don't question God like God God you question me I'm the one get the questioning you stop listening to me, stop liking me because you think I told you something or I should have stopped you or I should have said. That's what weariness will do. So that's why we got to make sure we're making good choices, good decisions. Look at somebody say moving slow. Moving slow. The old saying Rome wasn't built in a day. You got to move slow. If it's 20 years before you get a house, when you get the house, you won't remember the 19. Because you got a house now. We's in a house now. You ain't going to remember that. You better do what God says. Do when he says, do it. And don't grow weary. Amen. Everyone bow your heads. Well, matter of fact, I'm going to have you come up. Come on up. Come on up. We're going to just rebuke weariness. Somebody said this and saying that and pastor, if God don't do it, it's going to make me look this and that. And this. Boy, you better get all that off. You, you better get it all off. You better get it all off. Situations are different for everyone. Man, let God be God for you. God in your life. 
Let them be. Your life may not look like nobody else's. Your situation may be different from everyone else's. May not add up in the minds of your own family. But let God be God. Let God be God. Man, I can only imagine, boy, when Ramsey's sitting there and Moses walked in. And you know he looked different because he had seen God at the bush. So the Bible said, you know, he was changing his countenance. A little changed by the presence of God. You're going to look different. He walked in there. And, you know, Ramsey Pharaoh looked at him and was, was like, what you, what you here to do? I'm here to set my people free. God told me to tell you to let my people go. First thing, Pharaoh, you know the first thing he thought. But you a murderer, man. You, you, you kill one of them. Try to make him feel unworthy. That didn't change God's plan for Moses. God picked Moses after all of that. And the same with you. You, didn't, you haven't changed God's plan for you. But God's plan for you is for you. Not anyone else. Not anyone else. Aaron standing there right next to Moses. Didn't even have the same plan. You're just here to talk. But you're not Moses. Things are going to be different for Moses. And the person standing next to you, while you're on this altar, things are different for them. So you can't look and compare and think and wonder and all that. No, you got to trust God and just not grow weary. Amen. Keep your faith. In him. Everyone bow your heads. Father God, we just thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for being God. Thank you, Lord, for this message to just bring some balance to the way we may be feeling and thinking. Father God, you are God and we allow you to be that. We allow you to be a supreme being. We allow you to do things according to your will for us. And whatever it is we have to go through, whatever it is that has happened, whatever it is that maybe makes us different from others, whatever it is that makes us maybe uh, misunderstood by others, whatever it is, God, we are willing to take that on as long as you are with us. So, Father God, I pray right now that you would help us all to not grow weary. Lord, don't let us get weary to the point to where we have no expectancy. Don't let us get weary to the point to where we doubt you and what you've done so far. Don't let us get weary to the point, Father God, that we make a bad choice or a bad decision. But Father God, help us so we won't be weary. And everyone just lift your hands right now. And Father God, direct us and lead us. Just like you did Moses. Just like you did Abraham. Just like you did David. Just like you did those in the Bible. Lead us and guide us by your Holy Spirit into our own plan that you have for us. And we will give you glory and honor in Jesus name we pray amen amen come on and hug somebody and say don't be weary say when you get weary come talk to me and I'll encourage you I'll encourage you out of it come on hug them hug somebody else and say don't do nothing dumb while you're weary don't you make that decision while you're weary. That's a weary decision. Hallelujah. 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 Thank God for his word.